Hi, I hope you're having a great day because today we're going to have a grammar lesson. Well, just so you know, I've been trying to make this video, but I just couldn't because of too much background noise. So I had to leave the house early in the morning and go here just to have this video. That's why I have this pink background behind me. Well, anyway. Do you know what do you call this in English? Do you know how to use them? Today, we're gonna talk about them. If you answered modal verbs, then you're correct. Modal verbs are used as helping verbs or auxiliary verbs in English. We call them helping verbs because they are used with another verb in sentences, which we will now call as the main verb. Let's take a look at this example. I might fail math because of my test score. Notice that there are two verbs, might and fail. Remember, if you have two verbs in sentences, then it's always the first one which is the helping verb. Now that will make the second one as your main verb. In this example, our modal verb or the helping verb is might and the main verb is fail. Helping verbs change the meaning of sentences. Let's say we only have fail as our verb in this example. I fail math because of my test score. It might mean that I always fail math because of my test score. Or if I make it a past tense, it will be I failed math because of my test score. Now it means I took a test, had a terrible score, and because of that, I failed the subject. Now with might in the sentence, it will be I might fail math because of my test score. It will mean that I might have taken the test and I didn't do well because of that, I'm stating a possibility, a big possibility that I will fail the subject. The second thing that we have to remember when using helping verbs is that the main verb should always be in its base form. I've just given you an example. Let's have that sentence again. The main verb should always be in its base form. Can you find the two verbs in this sentence? I'll give you five seconds to do it. Five, four, Three, two, one. The two verbs in the sentence are should and be. Did you find them correctly? Now, don't be confused with the word always, which is in the middle of them, since always is not a verb, but an adverb. Well, this lesson is not about that, so let's not focus on that word. In this example, the verbs are should and be, and should is the helping verb, and the second one, be, is our main verb. If you've heard of be verbs, these are am, is, are, was, and were. This gives a lot of confusion to ESL students usually, probably because these verbs are kind of different from other verbs in the same group, unlike other verbs. I would experience asking an ESL student to give me the base form of these five verbs, and they would just stare at me looking very confused. Let's get back to the sentence and omit the helping verb. Now, from the be verbs that I mentioned earlier, we will now choose is since it's the one in singular form and in present tense. The sentence will be the main verb is in its base form. Now, it indicates a fact that the main verb is just in its base form. With the helping verb should, now it suggests that the main verb should be in its base form. The third important point that you have to remember is changing these verbs when it's needed. One of the things that learners don't know about these verbs is that they have their past tense form. Let's have the verb can for instance. I can write an essay in just 15 minutes. Well, I can't guarantee that this sentence is true and correct because I even need 15 or 20 minutes to come up with a good thesis statement. Well, anyway, let's say that, yes, I could do it in the past, but not anymore. I can't do it now. Should I say I can write an essay in just 15 minutes or I could write an essay in just 15 minutes? Again, I'll give you five seconds to choose which one is correct. Five, four, three, two, one. If your answer is the second one, then you are correct. Notice that we changed the form of the helping verb and not the main verb. 
The main reason is the second point that I mentioned earlier. Since could is still a helping verb, the main verb, right, should be in its base form. By the way, when I say base form, I mean to say the verb without s, without es, ing, d, or ed. If you've tried memorizing the forms of the verb in that table with principal parts of the verb, like the present, present participle, past, and the past participle, the base form is the very first one. To make it clearer, let's have another example. I will visit a long-time friend today. Say, this day has passed already, so there will be a need to change the form of the verb into its past tense. The sentence will be, I said I would visit a long-time friend, but maybe something happened, so I couldn't. Again, I would visit a long-time friend, but I couldn't. Did you notice what happened there? The modal verb will was changed into its past tense would. Again, the present is will and the past tense is would. I hope this video has been helpful. This is just part one of a series of lessons about modal verbs, basically an introduction. And if you want to watch lessons like this and be notified, then click that subscribe button and notification bell. Also, I want you to try using modal verbs in sentences and write them down below. Again, thanks for watching and I'll see you on my next video. Bye!